vitamins? All right, well, so what about supplements? You know, I, I think that we should look to the word itself. A dietary supplement means something to top off. So I always tell people, you know, if you have a choice of getting it from the whole food, the whole food will tend to have a lot of other stuff that's good for you. If you eat whole plant-based foods, for example, you get the fiber, you get the polyphenols, you get a lot of other chemical substances, you get the natural peptides uh, that are found in foods. Welcome back to the Longevity Deprocess channel. That was Dr. Lee talking about the general usage of supplements. He isn't your average doc dishing out pills. He's a superstar physician and researcher on a mission to prove that what you eat can be the most powerful tool in your health arsenal. Dr. Lee believes the key to preventing and even reversing chronic diseases like cancer and heart disease could be chilling right on your plate. As president of the Angiogenesis Foundation, Dr. Lee leads the charge in studying how the food we eat impacts the intricate network of blood vessels throughout our bodies. This groundbreaking research led him to develop a different approach to health one that prioritizes natural, plant-based foods. While Dr. Lee doesn't completely dismiss supplements, he emphasizes the power of a whole food diet, rich in his concept of grand slammer foods. So, the question becomes, are supplements a replacement for a healthy diet? Today, we'll explore Dr. Lee's philosophy on supplements and tell you about three that he actually recommends. Now, Dr. Lee will tell us a little more about supplements. Oh, a quick favor. We'd greatly appreciate it if you can subscribe and like. This helps the YouTube algorithm recognize the value of our content and share it more widely. He's so smart. That if you got a pure supplement, you might get the one molecule or two molecules that it's been created for, like a vitamin C supplement. Mm. Um, if you want to top off your vitamin C, it's pure vitamin C. You're going to get a lot of it if you if you take your take a, a vitamin. But you know, if you had citrus, you're going to get all that flavor. You're going to get the f a different kind of flavor. You're going to you get some. Uh, you do get sugar. You get fiber. You get the limonene and the, and all these other. Uh, hesperidin, all these other bioactives that you can't get from yeah. a regular supplement alone. That said, you are absolutely right. Supplements can be really important, particularly uh, for people who have difficulty getting a lot of, 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 uh, of some nutrients or their foods. And now for the first supplement, Dr. Lee might suggest you take. I love him, I love him, I love him. <laughs> So for example, um, I think omega-3 fatty acids are a great supplement if you get a high quality omega-3. Not everybody eats oily fish, you know, day and, you know, two to three times a week. You know, you only need to eat um, the amount in each serving with the size of a deck of playing cards. So you don't need to eat very much, but you know, that's not something people, most people do. People who live on the, on the coastline, they might be doing it, but many people don't. Um, so omega-3s are so important to our health. I mean, this has been shown time and time and again. That's a supplement that's that's definitely worth taking. And, and, and it's a lot easier to swallow um, omega-3s than it is actually to go to your fishmonger and then to look at what the catch of the day is. That's an example. Now, Dr. Lee will tell us a little bit about the history of supplements. You know, the, I, I, you know there's, there's always something valuable to look at the history of things. Supplementation, um, it wasn't developed to be an online internet scam, okay? Supplementation was a really serious effort to improve global nutrition yeah. because, you know, back in even the early 20th century, most of the world was undernourished. That's different than malnutrition. I mean, maybe there was some malnutrition too, but undernutrition, undernourished means that, you know, we were eating food, but we weren't eating enough of the right things at the right time. And so one of the things that supplements were developed for to do is to really fortify, supplement, top off, you know, um, uh, everyone so that everyone could have a more equal chance of being, uh, of filling up, becoming replete with the key micronutrients that we our body needs to actually survive and so i think it's a mistake to disparage supplements as a category i mean this is the theme of what we're talking about today yeah now for dr lee's second supplement suggestion well, another example of a supplement i think is really worth we're taking um is probably vitamin d3 yeah. okay vitamin d uh you know for for those of us who live 
in the Northern Hemisphere, where we don't have as much sun uh, all the time, all year round, and where it's cold, so we're indoors a lot and not always outdoors under the sunshine. So I'm not talking Costa del Sol, I'm not talking about South Africa, you know, or Australia. I'm talking about, you know, England, Northern Europe, North America, you know, and sort of the Northeastern side. Okay. We don't get as much sunlight. And even if we do go outside, because it's cold, we wear a lot of clothes. And so our skin tends to be covered up. And so vitamin D is made by our skin when sunlight actually hits it. And so we don't, we tend to be vitamin D deficient. So here's an example of where you can eat foods like mushrooms that can have vitamin D, for example. Uh, uh, by the way, I don't know if this is a little, little tip, a tidbit for you. I just told you that human skin with ultraviolet radiation from the sun will make more vitamin D. But did you know that if you took just a plain old lowly white button mushroom that contains some vitamin D, if you were to, um, before you eat it, when you buy it, if you slice it, like slice it pretty thinly and you lay the, the slices out and you put it in your windowsill so your sun, the sun shines on the slice, it will make more vitamin D. Wow. You want to you actually convert more vitamin D into the, into the mushroom. So if you're going to prepare something with mushrooms, sl slice them ahead of time stick them in front of a sunny window, no matter what time of the year it is, you know, um, maybe a couple hours before you um, cook with it and the mushrooms will actually give you more vitamin D. But it's, it's, not, it's a lot easier to get your regular dose of daily vitamin D um, by actually just having D3 supplements. And so that's an example. Vitamin D. <laughs> the final supplement Dr. Lee talks about taking is Lactobacillus ruteri. Dr. Lee says one of the most exciting scientific discoveries I've seen in recent years about healthy bacteria revolves around one called Lactobacillus ruteri. This is a gut bacteria that is naturally passed from mom to baby through breastfeeding. It turns out L. Ruteri doesn't just help our gut health, but it also boosts the immune system. In laboratory research conducted at MIT, researchers found another amazing benefit. L. Ruteri trims abdominal fat and even keeps animals eating a high-fat Western diet slim. Here is Dr. Lee talking about Lactobacillus ruteri, which is also in some cheeses and sourdough bread. Okay, all right, so then we got Parmesan cheese. Again, there was this whole backlash cheese for a while. Everyone told you not to eat cheese, then it's eat hard cheese. Uh, now you're saying that cheese has this benefit, the same as sourdough bread. Yeah, well, listen, this is a, this is a way that science can help clear up confusion. Here's okay. what we know. Cheese and breads are sometimes probiotic foods, which means that they're made with good bacteria. We know that you want good, healthy gut bacteria for your health. And there's a new thing that says that our gut health is connected to our hair health. You've got beautiful hair. And so here's the whole thing. There's one bacteria called Lactobacillus ruteri, which happens to naturally occur in Parmesan cheese, and it's in the starter for sourdough bread and pumpernickel bread. And Lactobacillus? Lactobacillus ruteri. 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 That's all you and remember. that's in cheese and in the starter of sourdough, sourdough bread. bread. That's not something we would see on the label. You might not. So you're informing us that it's um, there. And what does it do for us again? It actually makes your hair luxurious. In what quantity? Well, so... Because <laughs> I'm about to eat this whole thing, <laughs> if this is true. Here's the whole thing. It is just a one additional way that we actually know that eating uh, this bacteria is good for you. It has a probiotic, but this is now giving you permission to actually lean into the foods that you actually already love to be able to have some of it, because it's not so bad for you. It actually might be good for you and good for your hair. Okay, so like a few ounces? Yeah, a few ounces. A couple of slices? A week. Uh, uh, actually, you... So studies have actually shown a couple of slices of cheese a day is actually can be actually good for your health as well. Okay, and how does it make us feel? What about the feeling yeah. that we so get So here's the great part. Lactobacillus ruteri is not only good for our hair, it also stimulates our brains to release a social hormone called oxytocin, mm -hmm. which is the hormone that makes you feel good when you see a friend, when you hug a family member that you like, or when you have a kiss or even an orgasm. This is my cheese. <laughs> I'm not sharing it. <laughs> Okay. So, doctor, before you go, just to clarify, you are saying that this cheese, this bread, the lactobacillus ruteri, ruteri, yeah, sets off hormones. Yes, it actually natural brain hormones that actually are social hormones. They actually make us feel good. They can reduce stress. Uh, they they punch up our mood. And basically, when you actually feel good on the inside and you look good on the outside, you feel less stress anyway. She's baking a loaf of bread and I think it's sourdough. 
please give us a thumbs up, share this video with your friends and family, and subscribe for more valuable content on health and wellness. Your support enables us to continue delivering essential information to assist you in leading a healthier life. Thank you for watching, and as always, I wish you excellent health, wealth and happiness, with the key to vitality in your hands.